Hello science students! In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to create a line graph using Excel. So the very first thing you do once you are on your computer is you need to open Excel. So down here in the search bar, you're going to just type Excel and it brings up the app. So you're going to click the app. And once it opens, you're going to open a blank workbook. So this is the screen you should see whenever you're making a graph in Excel. So the first thing you are going to do is label box A1 with your independent variable, which is your x-axis. So right here, A1, um, I'm just going to make up variables for this one. I'm going to say that my independent variable is time in minutes. And then in B1, I'm going to put my dependent variable. So you're going to notice that when I start typing in B1, the U-T-E-S of minutes is going to be covered up. It's okay. It's still there. It's just kind of underneath. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, for my dependent variable, I'm going to say it's distance in centimeters. Then I'm going to fill in my independent and dependent variable data. Um, so in this case, I'll just say time 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minutes. And we'll say distance is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 centimeters. So you'll notice that with my numbers here, I didn't put any units. Excel doesn't really like when you mix numbers and units because it freaks out. Um, so when you record your data for your graph, just put numbers. Don't put any symbols or units. Leave it just with the numbers. If you have more than one line or more than one bar, you're basically going to continue adding in your consecutive columns. So C1 would be your second line, D1 would be your third line, and so on. For right now, I'm just going to use the one as my X and Y, independent and dependent. At this point, once I have all my data entered, I'm going to highlight only the squares that have data in them. So even though the centimeters goes into C, remember we typed it into box B, so we're not going to highlight C. If I add boxes that don't have data in them, it's going to mess up your graph. So only highlight the rows and columns that you actually typed into. Once you're highlighted and you have this green box around your data, you're going to come up to the top with the tabs and click on Insert. We're going to come over here to Charts, and the one we want is this one with the dots, the scatter, X, Y, or bubble chart. And depending on the lab that you're doing, you're going to click one of these. Um, mostly either the scatter with straight lines and markers or scatter with smooth lines and markers. Um, for today, I'm just going to click the scatter with straight lines and markers. As soon as you hover over it, a graph should appear. So mine is nice and linear because that's the data I put in, but depending on what your data is, your graph will change. Um, the next thing you're going to notice is if you're looking at your graph, we're missing a couple of very important things. First, we are missing our axis titles. So to get those, you're going to click on your plus sign over here, the green one, to add chart elements. We want axis titles, so we're going to click on those axis titles. Okay. There's a couple other things you can add depending on what your lab is asking you to do. If you want to add the data labels or need to, if you need a trend line or a legend, you can add those. Um, but for right now, for most of our graphs, we're just going to stick with the four marks that we currently have marked. So axes, axis titles, chart title, and grid lines. Now, the axis title, you can't just leave as axis title. You have to change them. So we said that our x-axis, or our dependent variable, was time. Don't forget to put your units. In our case, it was minutes. And our dependent variable was distance in centimeters. Again, don't forget to put your units. Your units shouldn't be anywhere on your axes. The only way we're going to be able to tell what your units are are how you label those axes titles. 
The last thing we need to do is change the title. For some reason, it just kind of automatically puts in your dependent variable label in as your title, but that's not good enough for us in science. We need to make sure it includes both your independent and dependent variable. So it needs to describe how those are related to each other. So for this one, because it's kind of made up data, I'm just going to write the, the effect of um, time on distance. And there we go. At this point, my graph is complete. For most of the graphs that you create for Honors Biology, you'll be actually putting them into your lab write-up, which you've probably done on Microsoft Word. So to do that, all you're going to do is click here, right-click, copy, and then you'll paste into your Word document. If you have any additional questions, refer to the reference sheet that I gave you in class, or if there are questions beyond that or you're having issues formatting or whatever, um, ask your teacher.